The power dock provides a secure way to transport your GoBlock portable power system in your vehicle and get the most out of it, including rapid charge from both the vehicle and solar inputs. For this installation, you will need a range of tools, including spanner and socket sets, side cutters, wire strippers, and a drill. When looking for a location to mount your power dock, choose a location that can be easily and safely accessed. You will need to leave enough clearance on all sides of the dock, including above, to access all the inputs and outputs and operate the handle and locking features. Before you begin mounting the power dock, ensure that the mounting surface is flat and safe to drill into. Make sure you're not drilling into any objects underneath the mounting surface. Ideally, the mounting surface should be a single layer rather than multiple layers, and if you're mounting into sheet metal, the sheet must have a minimum thickness of 1mm. These surfaces can include sheet metal that is thick or has nearby folds or welds, composite boards, plywood and timber. Do not mount the power dock to non-permanent or movable floor panels. Large sections of unsupported or non-structural mounting surfaces will require additional underside support or reinforcement. It must be permanently mounted to a fixed structural part of the vehicle or a surface that is rated to hold a minimum of 500 kilograms. When wiring the power dock, we recommend the use of the Red Arc Power Dock Wiring Kit. In this installation, we will be using the Power Dock Complete Wiring Kit for complete wiring installation into your vehicle. If you're only looking to wire the Power Dock Terminal Assembly, we'd recommend using the Power Dock Wiring Kit. If you're sourcing your own parts, refer to the Power Dock Instruction Manual for recommended lugs and ring terminals and cable sizing. When mounting your Power Dock, we recommend using M8 by 1.25 bolts with a minimum 8.8 .8 tensile strength, M8 nylock self-locking nuts, and M8 by 25mm flat washers. But if you're looking to source your own mounting hardware, ensure they're suitable for use with your chosen mounting surface. Using the Power Dock as a template, Mark out where you'll be drilling your six holes. Using either the vertical or horizontal mounting slots in the power dock, you will need to mark two at the top, two in the middle, and two at the bottom. These will be where you will drill into your mounting surface. Drill your holes as marked. Fasten the power dock to the mounting surface with the nuts, bolts, and washers. A power dock wiring diagram is available in the power dock manual. We will be installing the power dock in a typical configuration at the rear of the vehicle. Run the blue and red wires from the front to the rear of the vehicle to determine the correct length from the engine bay to the power dock. From the inside of the power dock body, clip the terminal shield into the rectangular slots at the front of the dock. Depending on your install configuration, either run the loose ends of the cables along the cable channel from front to back, then through the cable exit point at the back of the power dock body, or feed the cables through the cable exit point at the front of the power dock body. We need to wire the power dock terminal assembly. Remove the four nylock nuts from the screw threads on the terminals. Route the cables through the entry holes at the bottom of the terminal housing, then slide the lugs over the threaded studs. When looking at the assembly front on, from left to right you should have the blue ignition wire first, the red alternator wire second, the yellow solar wire third, and the black ground wire last. Replace the four nylock nuts and tighten to four newton meters or 2.95 foot pounds. Use a four millimeter Allen key on the reverse side of the terminals to hold the bolt still as it's tightened. Align the top two mounting points on the terminals housing with the holes in the power dock and the terminal shield. Using a Torx Plus 10 IP driver, fasten with the supplied M3 washers and M3 screws. When installed correctly, the washers should be tight against the plastic screw bosses. The power dock terminal assembly should be able to move slightly without resistance when it is properly fixed to the power dock. Take care to not over tighten the screws as this may damage the plastic housing. Connect the blue wire to a signal that is active when the engine is running and the 12 volt electrical system is charging to maximize the go block charging. Ensure that the blue wire is fused at two amps. For the red vehicle input cable, Run the full length red cable to the vehicle battery, trim any excess length and strip 10 millimeters of insulation from the free end of the cable. Terminate and connect the red cable to the 60 amp MIDI fuse and fuse holder. Terminate and connect the other end of the short red cable to the other side of the MIDI fuse 
and to the positive terminal on the vehicle battery. Connect the yellow and black cables to the four pole terminal block. Trim any excess length from the yellow and black solar cables. Strip 10 millimeters of insulation from each end of the cable and terminate the Anderson plug. Strip 10 millimeters of insulation from the end of the black ground cable and connect to the four pole terminal block. Connect to a suitable grounding point in the rear of the vehicle. Mount the four pole terminal block to a clear space on the vehicle. Everyone will mount theirs in a different location. We recommend mounting behind a panel, but for the ease of demonstrating the cable termination, we've left ours in view. Mark and drill four holes and fasten. Always touch up any exposed metal with a rust inhibitor. Finally, tidy up the cables using cable ties and or conduit or split tubing. Cables should be securely anchored to prevent movement that may cause any strain or abrasion. To check that your power dock is functioning correctly, start the vehicle and monitor the LED lights on the go block, or connect to the app and view the charge rate. For more technical information, resources and troubleshooting, visit the RedArc website or contact RedArc.